Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big, and it doesn't matter what sport you're betting on. We've got it all for you right here. Before we get into some Major League Baseball action for June 5th, I want to invite you to join so you'll have access to the VIP Club section, which has all these tools here that will help you make your picks successfully. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the games. There's several games uh, scheduled, not a full schedule, but plenty of games to look at. So we're going to get started here. The first one is the Detroit Tigers and the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies come in ice cold down, losers of their last four games. And then the Tigers are average status. They are one and two over their last three and three and three over their last six. The score predictor has uh, Detroit by a six to five score with about 41% level of confidence in the prediction. If we take a look at the over under, you can see Detroit has been involved against in under the line in two of the last three, but four out of the last six have been over, while Philadelphia has been involved in games under the line in four out of their last six. If you look at the power ranks indicator, neither team is very high as expected right now because they're not playing good ball. You can see it's at Detroit plus eight and Philadelphia at plus seven, both on the downward trend. If you look at the stability factor, the teams have been up and down as far as uh, consistency with regard to the favorite underdog status. You can see Philadelphia was at plus uh, six. Uh, back, what, beginning of last month, and now they are at plus five, and they had dropped as low as plus one, and Detroit was as high as plus seven, and now they are at plus two. So in the end, though, I like Philadelphia to bounce back at home, but I would pass on the over-under bet. Kansas City and Miami. If you take a look at this one here, Kansas City is ice cold down. They're coming off of a loss, and they are two and four over their last six, while Miami is 4-2 and two over their last six, but they've lost two out of their last three, including a 10-1 blowout to San Diego in their average status. The score predictor has Miami by a 6-4 score with about 47% confidence in the prediction. Uh, as far as the over-under goes, you can see Kansas City has not been scoring a lot of runs, and while well, the other team hasn't either, they've been involved in a, a lot of low-scoring games for the last four under the line, while Miami has been involved in games over the line in four out of their last six. If we take a look at the power ranks indicator, you can see Miami was up at plus 22, and they have taken the dip over the last few days, and they are now at plus 16, while Kansas City was at zero, and they've climbed up a little bit, and now, now, now they are at plus five. If you look at the head-to-head -head matchup, the teams have not met since 2019. The volatility oscillator is to see how consistent the two teams have been. Look at this. Kansas City is extremely consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status at plus 16, while Miami has not been there only at plus 1, and they've only been as high as plus 4 all year long. So in the end, though, I like the Marlins to win this one at home, but again, I will pass on the over-under bet. We're going to take a look now at Houston and Toronto. In this AL West versus AL East battle, both teams are 4-2 and two over their last six, and both teams are average up. If you look at the um, over-under, you can see two of the last three games for Houston has been under, but four out of the last six have been over. And the last two for Toronto have been under, and four out of the last six have been under. And the score prediction is looking for a lower scoring game as well. About 60% level of confidence, not real high, but the highest we've seen so far out of any of the games. And it's for Houston winning 3 nothing. On the power ranks indicator, you can see Houston is at plus 23, while Toronto has dropped from 22 to 20 over the last couple of days. So pretty close as far as that goes. If you look at head-to-head -head so far this season, Houston won two out of three games back in April at home. And they were home, uh, let's see, they were, well, actually they were underdogs in two out of those three games. If we take a look at the volatility oscillator, you can see here that both teams have been moderately stable, although up and down in the trend. Houston a more upward trend lately. While you see Toronto was at plus eight back in April, and they've gone up and down, and they've dipped to a lower plus, or actually they were minus one. Now they're back up to plus three, so not very consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status. In the end, though, Houston's a better team. The world champions will, defending world champions, I should say, uh, will take this one in a game under the line. Milwaukee and Cincinnati, in this uh, NL Central matchup, you can see Milwaukee comes in ice cold down, coming off of a loss, and, and just 2-4 and four over their last six. While Cincinnati is burning hot down, they have won five out of their last six games. 
Julian Torrejon is scheduled to pitch for Milwaukee. You can see his record is 1-1 one one with a 0.82 ERA, and he has an excellent bet at plus $138. While Luke Weaver, the 5.36 ERA, is going for Cincinnati, and he has a moderately good bet at, at plus $6 on pitcher profit oscillator. If you look at the over-under, uh, Cincinnati has been involved in games over the line in five out of their last six, while well, Milwaukee has been involved in games over in three of their last six. If you look at the power ranks indicator, Milwaukee is considerably higher at plus 22 compared to plus 11 for Cincinnati, who took a slight dip over the last couple of days. The score predictor likes Milwaukee by a 5-4 to four score with a pretty decent level of confidence, but not real high. It's still a little bit underneath the toss of a coin at 48%. In the end, though, I like uh, the Reds in this game, and but I think it'll be lower scores. So let's go with the Reds under the line. And the last game we want to look at is the Chicago Cubs and the San Diego Padres. You can see here the Cubs come in ice cold down. They are coming off of a loss, and they are two and four over their last six. While the Padres have average status, they are two and one over their last three, and they are three and three over their last six. The pitching matchup is Kyle Hendricks for the Cubs versus Blake Snell for the Padres. Hendricks is 0-1-1 with 3.86 ERA, but a pretty good bet at plus $59. Snell, on the other hand, has struggled this year, 1-6 with a 4.50 ERA. Um, his home ERA is very poor at 5.68, and he has a very bad bet right now at minus $798. The score prediction has the Cubs by a 3-2 score with 33% level of confidence in prediction, so it's looking for a lower scoring game. The power ranks indicator shows that both teams have been struggling plus 8 for San Diego. Now, the Cubs have gone up from plus 2, but they're still only at plus 7, but they have shown some increase over the past week. Um, the stability factor, note that the Cubs have been very inconsistent with regard to their favorite underdog status at minus 3, while the Padres have been more consistent at plus 9, and they've been pretty stable. Uh, in the end, though, I think I'm actually going to go with the Cubs at uh, the Cubs. The Padres at home, I know Snell has struggled, but I have a feeling here on this one. I'm going to go with San Diego, and I think this is going to be one. Even, although his score prediction has 3-2 to two in a lower scoring game, the confidence in the prediction is very low. But I'm still going to stay with the Padres, but I'm going to pass on the over-under bet. So there you have it. Those are the games for Major League Baseball for June the 5th. Happy betting, and we'll see you next time.